Let's carry on with the file from our previous example, or you can upload the supplied data set, Generative Design Geometry Setup V4. We now want to talk about our conditions that will induce stress on our design. So these are going to be things that are required in order for it to actually generate a design for us. So we need to look at both the constraints and the loads on a motorcycle frame. Now a motorcycle frame is an extremely dynamic problem and we're not going to be looking at all the load cases. We're going to take a simplified approach to this just so that we understand the process. The first thing that we need to do is we need to add some structural constraints. And we're going to make the assumption that the mounting lugs for our motor are fixed. So we're going to grab the outside faces of all four of these and we're going to fix them in 3D space. If we need to go back to a left view and say OK. So now inside of our study one generative, inside of load case one, we now have a fixed constraint for all four of those points. So this way we have a starting point for applying our loads. The next thing that we want to do is we want to generate our first load case. I'm going to rename this load case to static. And what we're doing is we're making the assumption that there are no external loads on the frame other than the ones coming from our springs. So understanding the spring load that we have on the front and the rear is essentially like taking the motorcycle and dropping it completely standing upright and having a max compression. So inside of our structural loads, we're going to apply a structural load to the bottom face here. And this one is going to be 30,000 newtons. So the magnitude is going to be 30,000. For the rear, for our shock, we're going to repeat that process. However, this time we want to make sure that we select both of these faces. And in this case, we're going to go to a left view and we're going to change the angle to be 175 degrees. So it's going to be in line roughly with the shock itself. And then its magnitude is going to be a little bit less. It's actually 24,675. So now we have the spring load on the rear and the spring load on the front and the fixed constraints of the frame itself where it attaches to the motor. So what we want to do from here is we want to clone this load case and we want to add additional loads to it. So we're going to right click and select clone load case. It's important that we activate our clone load case so any new loads or constraints will be placed in there. Now the second one we're going to consider some twisting in the frame. So I'm going to call this one twisting left. And I'm going to take out the load on the front end. We're not going to be considering compression on the front end. In this case, we're going to just be considering twisting. We could also pull out the load for the rear, but uh, I'm simply going to remove the load from the front by deleting it. Then I'm going to apply a new load. Now for twisting to the left, what we're going to do is we're going to select this upper portion of the stem or the head tube, and I'm going to rotate the load minus 90 degrees. And I'm going to give it a magnitude in this instance of 15,000. We're going to repeat that process on the bottom section of the stem. However, this time when we look at it from a top view, we want to rotate it the other direction. So it's still going to be minus 90. However, it is pointing in different direction. And this will be 15,000 as well. So this induces some twisting in the frame at that head tube. We're going to right click and clone this load. And again, we want to make sure that we activate it and we're going to rename it so that it's twisting R. And now we simply need to edit those twisting loads. So four seven is going to be our rear shock load and we can rename these as well. We'll go ahead and name that rear shock and then force eight. If again, we go to the top, we're simply going to rotate this 180 degrees and force nine, we're going to do the same thing and we'll rotate it 180 degrees. And the reason we want to do this is because we want to add as much symmetry as possible with these loads. There are instances or situations where the loads will not be balanced in this nature, but we want to consider that as our case. Lastly, we're going to take these and clone it one more time. 
and this time we're going to be considering a breaking load. So I'm going to simply call this breaking. And again, we're going to edit these loads. So force 11, if we view this from the top, force 11 was on the upper portion of our stem. It's kind of hard to see because of our obstacle geometry, but it was on the upper portion. So the upper portion is going to be pointing forward. So we're going to rotate that minus 90, and we're going to just keep that 15,000 newtons. And then force 12 is going to be pointing backward, so we need to rotate it minus 90 and say OK. Now essentially what we've done here is we've added a situation where under braking and the forks are trying to stand themselves upright in line with the y-axis. We are essentially pushing back on the lower portion and pushing forward on the upper portion. And again, I can't stress enough that we're taking a very basic look at the dynamics of a motorcycle frame. It's an extremely complex problem, and we're really not going to get into the engineering or the mechanics of these forces. We really just want you to understand the application of them. So it's going to be very important whenever you're working with generative that you have a good concept, a good idea of what these loads are, not only their magnitude, but their direction and their location. So these are going to be the cases that we're looking at here. And once we've done that, let's go ahead and save the file so we can move on to our next step.